Welcome to Millionaire University, where keeping it real keeps you moving forward. I'm your host, Tara Williams. Entrepreneurs are so stinking brave, okay? And do you want to know why? Because they live in a future that doesn't even exist yet, physically. I was on a morning run and I looked across the street and there was this woman. She was walking with her dog. It was a really cool dog on this gorgeous golf course. And she looked like she had it together. And I thought, you know, some people are just living very different realities than others. And I wondered, how did she get there? It's just this moment, this blip in time that I experienced a complete stranger and thought, wow. Somebody somewhere, and maybe even her, has created a business that is supporting this beautiful lifestyle that she's living. And that's why I think entrepreneurs are amazing human beings. Your current life and your environment, your bank statement, doesn't even show all the evidence of what you're able to create, yet you still move forward knowing that in the near future, that's going to be your reality. You just keep taking that leap every single day. And I think that's incredible. So how does someone who has an idea only within their mind get from there to something that's actually created? It starts with that, with your thoughts, your inner world. Your thoughts are alive with the possibility that you could create a business that could support you and your family and the desires you have to make your life what you want it to be. And then you feed those thoughts. You see that others have done this very thing. Why not you? You take those thoughts and you let them live in your mind. They become alive which causes you to feel a certain way. Your thoughts create your emotions. And the way we feel affects the way we act. And before you know it, the thing that you are thinking about not too long ago is now manifested physically before your eyes. It's a wild ride. I can't even tell you guys how many times Justin and I have been in a situation that if you were looking at it from the outside, you'd probably think to yourself, oh man, (laughs) that looks pretty rough. That looks bad. But something inside of us caused us to push through that negative chatter and that outside drama. And in time, it was transformed. Do you even understand how surreal it is to be sitting right now in this home that I dreamt about as a teenager? It's a home I would have driven by in my car and thought, oh, I wonder who lives there. I wonder what they do. I wonder what's happening in their life. Besides not feeling guilty, sometimes I feel so blessed. And it's not because I have nice things around me, but because I live in a world, an inner world, where I believe that good is constantly possible, which means my brain is constantly looking for and seeing evidence of that belief. And so my environment around me and my inner environment shift to fit that perspective. So here I sit talking about this very same thing to you guys who are going to do the same thing in your lives. It's crazy to me. I mean, I have joy in my life that I dreamt of so intensely when I was struggling so hard with anxiety and depression, and now it lives in me when this wasn't even that long ago. And I know myself, I will continue to face the arms of that discomfort in my life until it is gone. And I know right now there's a version of me that's even more prosperous and happier and more giving and excited and alive with the possibilities of what life can be. And the cool thing is, is I know she's me, so why not live with her in my world today? Any fear that I have in me now won't be living in me in a year or two or 10 or 20. So why not get rid of it today? Why not live free of it right now? And what I think is more wild and and brave is that you guys are going to watch this process unfold before you as you listen to Justin and I change every single day we do this podcast because of our belief that Millionaire University is going to do good in this world. So if we're doing it, why not you? What thoughts do you have that are bigger than the limited way you are feeling right now? It was not very long ago that MU was just this thought, just this idea that we had. And before Justin and I thought about creating this business and starting this podcast, we felt so heavy. I'm just keeping it real, but we had baggage. You might be thinking, well, why? You guys have already done businesses. You know you can do it. You've done it multiple times. Why are you feeling so heavy? We hadn't evolved our thoughts yet around the experiences that we had had with those past businesses. We had previous business PTSD. So we felt stuck. We had this great idea, but how can we create a business with those thoughts living inside of us? It's not possible to create what we wanted to create with that headspace. For some reason, that song by the Black Eyed Peas always comes to my mind. What are you going to do with all that junk? All that junk inside your trunk. Okay, that's not an appropriate song, but it's like, that's what it feels like. All this junk inside of me. It's got to be dealt with. We knew we had scars we hadn't faced, so we did. And we're going to face every single one that comes up until we are completely free. We are learning from our experiences and are literally changing as human beings by just changing our thoughts around them and feeling the feelings that we were too scared to feel. 
So I'll give you a real life example of working out that junk. It wasn't pretty, but we're just keeping it real. You know where you have these spots in your mind where you can tell you're just feeling trapped, like imprisoned? I feel like financial fears has been one of them, like one of the biggest prisons of my mind in this life. And the irony of marrying an entrepreneur. As we got into creating MU, I kept having these like supercharged intrusive thoughts. Like you were lucky the first few times. You're not relevant anymore. There's way better teachers out there. What if you can't do it again? You're going to waste all your time and money and then you'll have nothing. And then then my mind went like dark, guys. I was like, you're going to be on the streets like all those poor people you see in San Diego and your kids will be traumatized and it'll be all your fault. Man, this is what was cycling in my brain and it was torture. The problem with these thoughts is that there was a little part of me that believed them enough to start the chemical reaction as a result of those thoughts. And because of the baggage stored inside of me and I knew it, I could feel it and it was intense. So you take the baggage that I was carrying that was being triggered and then you take the new chemical reaction that I'm creating through my thoughts and it was like the perfect storm. But I wasn't about to let that ruin this opportunity. I was like, no more. I'm so tired of feeling this way. We are going to handle this. I learned years ago when overcoming panic attacks that life will keep calling you to return to the places that you're scared of. Get back in there. Try it again. When I was having panic attacks in my car, I couldn't not just drive. So I had a choice. I could either stop driving because it was too scary because I was afraid of having a panic attack or I could get back in there and feel the things I was scared of feeling. Life will always call you back to your broken places and you can answer that call and overcome it or you can avoid it and it will still hold you captive. Sometimes we're not ready. We don't have the tools to evolve. But if you do answer that call, life will always call you back to your places. And if you're willing to fill the baggage, create new thoughts around it and create a new reality, then you are free. And that's why I no longer have panic attacks. So when we started to create MU, for four days straight, I had this crazy anxiety like buzzing through my system. It caused me to be shaky and I was so uncomfortable and I could just feel it was moving through me. It was intense. I had a decision at that point to make. Am I going to feel this? Am I going to face this? Or am I going to leave this? I had enough evidence of the past to say business was hard and it's challenging and I I can't do it. But I had way more evidence that business was awesome and it had changed our lives. But my body just had to let go of the fear, even though there was a ton of evidence that I was taking care of way more than I even needed to be. But my brain was caught up in telling a very different story. And it's all from years of a bad habit that I had created. And thank heavens I'd created it because that means I could change it. So I felt the feels, the discomfort in my room, in my closet, in the office, on a run and said, I am willing to face this fear. Body, feel it. What is in there? Bring it up. Let's go. Then there came a point where I was in the situation that my mind was totally fixed on, that when it would happen, something bad would happen. And I was there, sitting there, and my body started to shake. And I started to feel and started to create these new thoughts around what was happening. And I caught myself in the moment. I was so proud of myself. And I was like, if you don't stop doing what you're doing right now, you're going to create new baggage that you're going to have to work out in the future. Be present right now. So I told myself, you are so good right now. Look around, you're safe, you're clothed, you have food, you have everything you need and way more. Take this in, record this, not the thoughts that you're thinking right now. And I got through that situation and it was totally minor. I was not going to die like my brain was telling me that I was. And my body started to calm, my nervous system calmed. It was like all that baggage had just burned out of me and I knew it. I was calm and at peace and for the rest of the night I felt pretty good. And I woke up the next morning and I felt so peaceful. So feeling that cozy, warm, peaceful feeling is one of my absolute favorite emotions of all time. And it's been hard to come by for me. But another thing that I love is that every time I thought the exact same thoughts that I had previously that caused me to be attacked by these feelings that were heavy and hard to deal with, I felt good. I felt peaceful. The fear wasn't there. It was gone. And then catch this. I flopped from feeling like the world was out to get me and I felt isolated and separated and scared to now feeling connected. And I started to get all these ideas for MU. I started to get really excited and I could feel this creative energy living inside of me all because I was brave enough to get out what lived inside of me that was tainting my whole view of the project. The tricky thing with baggage is that it skews the way you see things and it's important to bring it up and to feel it. You can learn so much from feeling what you're meant to feel in life. I'd had experiences in life that were trying to teach me and they kept calling me back, feel me so I can teach you. And then when that was cleared out of me, I had space, space to create. And here I am talking to you guys today. It's proof and how powerful our thoughts are. So I'm coming to you from a place of having many low-level thinking fears and stresses and weaknesses that have limited me. 
And I'm telling you, no matter what has happened in my life, it has been me that has created the prisons of my own mind. But I'm also okay with that because that was a woman or a girl making the best decisions that she knew at that time. I'm just ready to evolve and feel good and do some good. There's a better way to do business and life. And it's up to you if you want to free yourself of those limitations. You might be wondering, you know, how did Justin feel about this? How was he doing in this situation? You guys live together. You have kids together. You share the same bank account. You should probably be having the same experience or a similar one all these years. You couldn't be further from the truth. And you know why? Because the thoughts that lived in my mind do not live in Justin. And they have not ever since I met him, which honestly is so attractive. And I've leaned on a lot. But I want that to live in me. I want to be able to stand on my own two feet. I'm a much bigger help to our business and our home and our family than when I'm letting my fears run me. That I do know. He is one of the main reasons why we are able to achieve the financial success that we have because he has always had that belief. And I have believed in it enough to put the hard work and the time in, but I've suffered greatly. And that time is done, my friends. Justin has always believed that he was rich. He believed this no matter what we were doing, no matter where we were, no matter what our external situation was. He always knew within a few years we would be wealthy, always. That was his belief, and so therefore that was his reality. And that is what has come to fruition. Two people living together, having very different experiences until finally I got on board and could create this together with him. So as we discuss on this podcast, we're going to be real. We're going to be authentic. We're going to put it out there. When I was 33, I had a bit of a crash, and I really faced some fears then. And then I find myself these last couple of years really facing some hard things about myself. And I cannot tell you how empowering it has been to stumble through these situations, but have enough tools to make my way so I could overcome these as I continue to remove these limitations that hold me back and run me down and cause me to be so tired totally unnecessarily. So check this out. This last summer, my family and I decided to take a trip to Kauai. We did a bunch of different activities, and one of the ones that we decided to do was go on this helicopter ride. And of course, we wanted to do the extreme one where the helicopter didn't have any doors. Now, I've always had a fear of turbulence, you know, kind of that dropping feeling. I like roller coasters, but I hate the droppy ones. You'd think I would have thought about this, but it just didn't really cross my mind that a helicopter would have an extra amount of turbulence, so I wasn't scared. I was pretty pumped to go on this ride. I love nature, I love Kauai, and I was excited to see it from this aerial perspective. They put us all in there. I was the last one to get in. And of course, I was right on the edge, which means to the right of me, there was no door, just an open expanse. My family was all together. And then there was this guy. And then there was me. And then there was this expanse of nothingness, which I could fall into. But I thought, okay, this is fine. It's fine. It's going to be fine. So I just sat there and I'm like, okay, awesome. This is going to be great. The helicopter started. We lifted off and instantly it just started to sway. And it swayed in a way where it felt like I was tipping out of the airplane and tipping to the right. And the guy next to me and I both tried to grab the seats in front of us, but they were too far away. We couldn't grab them. I couldn't grab him because I don't know him. He's a stranger. He's not my husband. So I thought maybe I'll hold on the outside of the helicopter. So I put my hand out the window to hold onto the hood. But then I was like, I feel like my hands are going to get chopped off. So I didn't feel good about putting my hands up there. So I just grabbed my seatbelt and held on for dear life as we swayed back and forth forth and felt all kinds of turbulence. The only thing holding me from falling out of this helicopter, falling to my death, is this little seat belt. Like, is it really strong enough to keep me here and keep me safe? There was a point about 15 minutes in where my brain was so stressed out <laughs> by what was happening in this helicopter that this thought came through, Tara, just jump out. Put yourself out of your misery. In that moment, I thought to myself, holy cow. What kind of a thought is this? What is happening right now? And I checked myself. Luckily, I had enough knowledge and wisdom to know that was a horrible idea, but that'll get your attention. You'll definitely start thinking, you know what? Maybe we should handle this if that's where we're going. This is a fear I no longer want to entertain and I don't want it to captivate me in any way anymore. So I started to give myself therapy during our beautiful Kauai helicopter ride. And in about 15 minutes of that, I was able to calm down and relax and enjoy partially the rest of that flight. But that feeling and that thought and that fear stuck with me. And on the five hour flight home, I got to practice this all over again, but this time for five hours. So I told myself again, let's go. We're gonna feel this. I want this fear gone. I need to feel everything. I need to face it, acknowledge it, feel it and be free. And I did, but I didn't know if I'd gotten all of it, if I was free of it until I had the opportunity to hop on an airplane just a few months ago when I went to my sister's 40th birthday. I was flying by myself because I was the only one going and I waited. 
in every flight, you usually have some turbulence. I didn't have too much there. And so there was a little bit and I didn't have any response. So I was like, okay, but that wasn't bad. Maybe it was, you know, maybe just a fluke. I'm feeling pretty good. On the way home, as we started to land, we hit some pretty good turbulence as we were coming in for about the last 15 minutes. And I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel scared. I didn't have that where the pit of your stomach just kind of drops. I felt good. So I looked around to see if this was just kind of a fluke or maybe the turbulence wasn't that bad. And that's why I was dealing well with it. So I looked to the right of me and I could tell the woman next to me was really struggling with the turbulence. Every time we take a bit of a drop, she would grab her armchairs and just look around with such stress on her mind. And man, did I feel for her. But at the same time, I was like, I'm doing it. I am free. This is how powerful our thoughts are. A lot of times we think our environment is creating the way we feel. Our situation is why we can't do what we want to do. My experience has been that my thoughts are the thing that don't allow me to do what I want to do. If I decide in my mind that I can't do this thing, my brain will look for all the reasons as to why I cannot. It will give me the evidence and it will prove to me you shouldn't be doing this jump. Jump from this situation. Get out. Don't be the person who jumps. Be brave enough and willing to feel what needs to be felt, but then more importantly, to create thoughts that are bigger than the way that you are feeling right now. Feel what needs to be felt, feed the bigger thoughts. On that helicopter ride, my fear was that I was going to fall out and die. But my bigger thought was that I love my family. I want to be here. And obviously it was a no brainer, but you get the point. Tell you a lot of people, it's what they do. They jump because of pain. They find a way to quit. They give up on the bigger dream. You can always find a way to quit and you can always find evidence if that's what you choose to look for. I'm just telling you today from a person who's experienced this feeling of wanting to quit so many times, you can get through it. You can do it. The fear of the fear is always scarier than actually facing the thing you're so scared of. Liberation from your fear feels a million times better than any other fear that is attacking you saying the opposite. And then once you've learned from that experience, you're free forever. It's not like you overcome a fear and it keeps coming back. If you faced all the arms of the things that were meant to teach you from the experiences that you've had, you are then free to move forward thinking, feeling, and acting differently in your life every single day, every time you have that thought. They say we have around 60,000 thoughts a day. Imagine if none of those thoughts were fear-based, limited, focused on scarcity, but were thoughts creating and supporting your good, which then affects those around you. I hear so many adults and sometimes kids say, I'm just so tired. What I think they're really trying to say is I'm so tired of thinking this way, of feeling this way, of seeing the world in this way. I'm just tired. There's a quote by Joe Dispenza and he says, in an age of information, ignorance is a choice. I'd add to that. In a world of beauty and joy, staying stuck in misery and stress isn't helping anyone. You can enjoy your life. It's like James Allen says, as a man thinks, so he is. As he continues to think, so he remains. Your thoughts have power. Can you create a bigger thought that's bigger than the fear that's trying to pull you down? Have the courage to face your inner world and watch your outer world change. We live in an incredible day and age. We have access to all kinds of information. This information is giving us the tools to turn and then see ourselves, to face ourselves and become the versions of ourselves that best support our dreams in the business world and also the biggest dream we all have together, which is just to be happy and enjoy our life and do good in this world. The end. Get out there, MU. Remember, within your own mind and your own heart, you have the power to create something that you want to live in. Be brave enough to go out there and do it and wise enough to feel what needs to be felt so you can let go of what needs to be let go of to be able to think what you need to think and create the life you want to create. Have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.